of my fine red algae. So let's go below and take a look. gonna show everybody how to do algae pressings today. I just went out and did a snorkel in the backyard there and collected some fresh specimens you'll see right here. Some really nice fine reds. So let's go ahead and take it out of our collection bag. And when you go out to collect specimens like this make sure you have the proper permits and license and whatnot and you do it according to the rules. Um, for the state or location that you, you're in. Okay, I think that's uh, good enough. Great, so as you can see, lots of really beautiful lacy red algae. This, this stuff is absolutely the best kind to press. I think this is a Rhodooptilium uh, genus specimen here so let's go ahead and just start with this because it came out it's got a nice pattern and what I like to start with is I usually keep my algae in a bowl of water uh, if you can get fresh seawater fresh salt water uh, that's great if you have to you can use fresh water but just know that the longer your specimens sit in fresh water the quicker they will lose color and degrade and if they sit for too long, that's when you're going to start having bleeding of the, the pigments onto, onto your pressing paper. Uh, what I typically like to do is I use a painting tray uh, just as a reservoir for water. That's how I'm going to wet my watercolor paper. That's what I use, something heavy weighted and is absorbent such that when you put the wet algo specimen on there, if it's all, with all its slime and whatnot, once it dries, it will kind of ad adhere and stick to this absorbent paper. So I use a watercolor paper. I make sure I wet it <coughs> before I get my specimen on there. I like using this cutting board. It makes everything easy to transfer. And some people do this, you know, there are many ways to do it. There's no one right way. This is my method. Uh, some people do this in a tray where the paper is submerged and they simply put the specimen on there underwater and it makes it a lot easier to open the specimen up. I don't like to do that because it gets the paper a little too wet. And um, as you'll hear me say over and over again, uh, the key to, well, one of the secrets to pressing algae is to get your specimen to dry before it rots, all right? And there are many factors that, that come into play with that. For instance, the more, the bigger the sample you have, the more biomass it has, the longer it's going to take to dry and the higher the odds of it um, rotting before it does dry. And I have a couple of methods in the drying stage of this that I can share that I use to help make sure I dry everything quickly. This is an absolutely beautiful specimen. All right, here's another secret I like to share for pressing algae is that this is a really beautiful specimen but, um, you know, a little bit of trimming in making algae press goes a long ways just because it shows off the specimen better. It doesn't overlap. It reduces that biomass, like I mentioned, and um, it just represents the specimen better. Just keep in mind, we're trying to take, uh, you know, uh, an algae that is three-dimensional in nature underwater. This is beautiful. When I saw this underwater and collected it, it you know, has this three-dimensional shape and we're trying to force it onto this two-dimensional plane. Uh, so all the more reason why you need to trim and trim, trimming goes a long ways, like I mentioned. So 
let's go ahead and open it up and see where we have overlap. I think just for the sake of showing this, actually, I don't like that frown as much. I think it looks better if we take this frown out. So a lot of the algae you can just pinch with your nail. We'll, we'll save this later to do a big composite piece. Go ahead, open this up as much as you can. One of, one of the tools I like to use is just a simple bamboo, bamboo skewer to kind of help tease everything apart and open it up. So here's a piece that's overlapping. Go ahead and pinch that off. Um, and I have another piece of equipment or tool that I like to use, another little secret that I'll show you in a moment. I think I'm going to take this piece, save it for later. There you go. You see that opens it up real nicely, a lot less overlap. Let's go over here. So this bamboo skewer does a good job in getting in there in those branches let's go ahead and remove that and helping me tease it all apart so you can see it get in there let's go ahead and remove this one save that for a later piece this is just an absolutely beautiful specimen of um like i mentioned i think the genus of this one is rhodooptilium Go ahead and get rid of that. And definitely want some trimming in here. I don't think I can really show that well without taking a few. Let's go ahead and do that. And this takes a lot of time, especially for some of these fine red specimens. So, you know, the piece will come out as well as as much time as you're willing to put into it, if that makes any sense. So you can take a long time and really trim and figure this out, or you can just be like me at this point and go from here. I think I'm gonna use my, my secret tool Good old regular spray bottle. Does a really good job helping get when it's full. Helping get rid of a lot of the crud, you can just spray it off. But also for these fine red algae, you can spray against the grain and you can see it really, I mean, against the grain as in against the branching patterns here. You can really open it up. Okay, you know, I think I'm going to leave it at that. This is really pretty. And I have a lot more algae to press, so I don't want to spend too much time on just one single one. There you go. Once we dripped as much of the water off of it as we can. Go ahead and take it over to our press that we've set up. <clears throat> so this press already has uh, pressings in it because like I mentioned, I did a previous video that didn't record, didn't work out. So the pressings from that video is here. But what I wanna show you here in this press is that we have at the bottom uh, perforated board behind it, supported by a few of these one by twos and ra and uh, with a ratchet strap on it. You'll see where that comes into play later. And on this perforated board, and I, I use perforated board because I think it it you know provides a little more airflow, air exchange to help dry everything out. But uh, inside this press, between the two perforated boards, we have alternating layers of cardboard uh, towels and you know either a piece of cloth or linen. Uh, something to keep the algae from sticking to the dry material as opposed to sticking to the actual piece of paper. So, you know, immediately next to the perforated board, I have starting cardboard. I have a towel. We have the pressing itself. 
right there. We have this layer of cloth, another towel, and finally uh, a piece of cardboard. So this is the piece of cardboard from the previous pressing. Got to put a towel there. Cardboard. Towel. On goes our pressing. Keep it from sticking. Something that, you know, is relatively tight knit or oh, doesn't have all the loops of the towels where the, you know, fine red algae is going to want to stick to that instead of the paper, a uh, piece of pressing paper. So anything you can find that works is good. Another, another towel. Cardboard. And now we're ready for the next pressing to come on. And so all these layers of what I essentially call dressing, like I mentioned earlier, you want to dry your specimen as quick as possible so that it doesn't rot. Um, and what I do is I open up this press once a day uh, during the pressing process and I take all of these layers of dressing out. I go ahead and throw it in the dryer and dry it for about 30, 45 minutes till everything is dry and uh, warm. And I go ahead and I restack everything again and close it back up. Uh, doing that process, you know, my pressings dry in a matter of two to three days, um, and it dries a lot quicker, retains the color better, and so that that's what I do. All right, but I think we might go on to a really special specimen. This one is called. This look looks kind of gross because it's been in fresh water, and so that causes it to break down a little bit. But this one is called Desmarestia. Lingulata, specifically. Um, and this is an acid weed. It's a really, really pretty specimen. I have it separated from everything else because, like its namesake, it, it produces acid. So if this were to mix with everything else, it would actually bleach those other algae. Um, so let's go ahead and put it on here. This one is going to be very, very difficult. To display it's flat so we don't have to do any pruning but you can see it just loves to fold and gets tangled up in itself so again using my handy little bamboo skewer I'm gonna slowly open this up oh man I almost instantly regret getting this specimen because I am just remembering how much work these guys are. But if you're willing to put in the time, this can be really, really pretty. Okay, welcome back. So we're, you know, five, ten or so minutes later. This specimen has, you know, finally opened up real nicely. A lot of spray bottling and skewering to untangle this whole mess. But as you can see, uh, definitely worth it. Really nice specimen of Desmarestia lingulata, acid weed. So, you can see really pretty patterns where the blades are coming off of the edge of the other blades. The smaller blades come off of the edge of the bigger blades. Anyways, let's go ahead and put this in our press. Okay, welcome back. This is day two of our pressing, and I just wanted to open it up for everybody to show what it 
everybody what it looks like. And like I said in the last video, I like to open this up every day to get all the dressing in between the layers of pressing done. Uh, in between every layer of pressing, take it out to uh, dry. That way we dry this these pressings as quick as possible. Take these. <clears throat> so, cardboard layer, towel. Here's the last pressing from last night, which is going to be the first to be exposed. This is a Nereocystis bow kelp with the bulb cross sectioned out. Really cool specimen. So again, I'm collecting all of the dressing. I'm just going to go ahead and let's see, put the pressing aside. Beautiful, beautiful specimen, beautiful pressing. Still damp, I can tell. So needs more drying. But we're going to put this guy over here for now. Actually, where can I put it? Go ahead. Thank you. Go ahead and put this aside. Keep opening these up. And I open every single one of these up, check on them the next day. And again, all this goes in the dryer to dry nice and warm and dry. And then I restack it after about half an hour or so. I also like doing this to give it a little bit of UV. Whoa. Oh, thanks, Hazel. Um, to kill any, you know, mold or bacteria that's grown on there. Another really nice Nereocystis specimen. Beautiful. The blades are just starting to to separate at the suture lines in that phase. Put that down from there. At this point, I probably will start fast-forwarding the video.